my last video, I mentioned the idea of a beautiful mess, a composition with many elements that still somehow appear cohesive, and I think I found the perfect place and event to practice. Recently, the Philippines celebrated Chinese New Year and the oldest Chinatown in the world was the perfect spot to experience the festivities. I came in at exactly 7 a.m., a little early for a 9 a.m. riser like me. I was a bit groggy, but I'm glad I was there early. There were a lot of activities, but not everything was open yet. To warm up, I took photos of everything I found interesting without putting too much thought into it. Then I saw these kids with makeshift dragon costumes. Fascinated with their creativity, I followed them for a bit until they started to put on a performance. They were going to do this the whole day, trying to earn money through donations. After watching a set of performances from the kids, I continued walking and explored the side streets. I was lucky to find a group of dragon dancers setting up their dragon. I took some candid photos and it was nice of them to allow me to stay and document their preparations. They asked me for a portrait and I was happy to take one for them. After that, at around 8 a.m., I decided to leave the group and continue walking. I focused my attention on the unassuming vendors who, by now, have seen a lot of photographers around. At the time, I was so confident in getting close. I was also able to engage with them after taking candid photos. The amount of visual stimulation was staggering. For someone who used to shoot only in wide spaces, I was a bit overwhelmed. I decided to change pace on the photo walk, less walking and more photographing. It was so exciting to see a lot of new things and a concentration of people in a small area. You see a lot of movement, colors, and different sounds coming from everywhere. It was truly festive. It was around 8.30 in the morning when I finally met some friends. We were supposed to meet at 7, but due to Manila traffic, they couldn't make it on time. I didn't mind waiting. In some sense, I even thought I was lucky to have been able to see some things alone. Moments that maybe other photographers were not able to catch. It was also around this time when fire breathers came out. They were one of the main attractions of the celebration. Each fire-breathing group had dancers, fire-breathers, and members who would pass out envelopes for donations. If you gave money, they would perform in front of you. The photographers warmed these groups, 
and it was hard to get a shot without other photographers being part of the frame. Sometimes, it would even get rough. People would be pushing others to get a nice view. But as soon as the performance was done, everyone went back to being friends. At around 10 a.m., more and more people flocked to the area. I saw an ocean of heads from afar. Taking photos in the middle of the street was hard due to the proximity of people to each other. It was so packed that it was hard to raise the camera to my eyes. I moved to the side of the streets and turned my focus to the vendors. Going back to the idea of a beautiful mess, which I mentioned is a photo with many elements, but still having a cohesive composition. I found this challenging to do because most of the time, you are dealing with many moving subjects. While you are working with multiple subjects, you are, at the same time, making sure that there is a good form to ground relationship and that there are good overlaps. It is challenging, but when you nail a decent shot, it is very satisfying. We visited the temple and observed the practices of those going there. The place was filled with smoke from incense, and everyone was quiet. Trying not to be a disturbance, I went out as soon as I was done taking a few frames. The day continued with a lot of walking. Even though we did not have any specific plans, we were somehow able to catch an event wherever we went. We were waiting for a parade to start when a big fire happened at a nearby location. This prompted a lot of fire trucks to pass through an already busy area. We saw a group of dragon and lion dancers performing for a store. A treat for us because there weren't a lot of people around. Finally, the parade began. I didn't know what to expect, but I was surprised to see a parade of people throwing candies and handing out red envelopes. Despite the letdown, I was still happy taking photos. After the parade, we decided to call it a day, but still continued to take photos until we reached the train station. Thank you for watching until this part. I really appreciate it. If you have more time to spare, let me share some tips. First, be mindful of overlaps. Create space between your subjects. If it can't be avoided, Aim for good overlaps. A good overlap means that you are not creating awkward cuts and that subjects are still readable. Second, in relation to the first, be mindful of your background. In places like this, the background may include other people. Look for pockets of clean background like a wall or the sky. If you can't find any, use color to make the subject stand out. Third, don't be afraid to get closer. In events like this, people already know that there will be cameras around. So don't be afraid and don't try to be sneaky. Fourth, go high or go low. Try different perspectives for a more dynamic shot. This might also open up cleaner backgrounds for you. Lastly, engage with people. If you are concerned about keeping it candid, 
Remember that you don't have to take photos of the people you are engaging with. You can engage with someone like a vendor and then take photos beside him. Being with the vendor allows you to take things from his perspective. It allows you to blend in. That's all for today guys. If you have any questions, comment down below. Share this video if you enjoyed it. See you next time.